Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. My name is Joshua. I'm Kirsten. And I'm Katia. And our presentation will be around the sport of horse racing. We'll talk about the development, commercialization, governance structures and current issues surrounding the sport. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Welcome to the third race at the Honeymoon is Over Now. They're at the gate. We are going to start with the history of horse racing. Modern horse racing first started in the 17th century in Britain, during the reign of James I. In the beginning, it was only a sport for the royal, but they developed a passion for it, so they soon began to set up races for the public as well. Many of these events were held at the bell courses. Not, not long after, in the 18th century, horse racing became the first regulated sport in Britain. The horse race racing industry developed very rapidly and soon became a sport watched by millions of people each year. This then led to the increase of betting on races. Furthermore, the demand became so high that the breeding of horses had to come in place very quickly in order for the sport to keep running. Betting soon became legalised in 1961 and the High Street Betting Shop was born, also putting horse racing in the nation's living room as it became a regular televised sport. Even today, in the 21st century, horse racing is the second most watched sport after football. Broadcasting has been very important in the commercialisation of horse racing. Broadcasting has allowed the sport to reach a greater audience than just the patrons who are physically at the game. Up until 2012, both Channel 4 and BBC both had rights to broadcast horse racing, with Channel 4 having the greatest share of the races. In 2013, the two competed for the rights until British Racing decided to give sole broadcasting rights to Channel 4. In 2013, there were 88 days or 300 hours of live programming, with an average viewership of 1.2 million. Thanks to digital racing channels at the Races and Racing UK, horse racing has become the sport most watch, the sport with the most broadcasting time in Britain, which has helped it become the second most watched sport behind football. The Grand National is one of the top 10 most viewed sporting events, attracting 8.9 million viewers in 2013. By reaching a larger audience through broadcasting, this has helped the commercialization of the sport. Sponsorships are another important part of the commercialization of the horse racing, as it is the biggest source of revenue for the sport at £31 million in 2012, which is a 20% increase since 2008. Most of this money is paid in prize money or back to the race course to help funding. A sponsor can sponsor races, buildings, or a series of races. Clothing, band, clothing brands oftentimes sponsor the jockeys as well. British Racing generated £3.45 billion in 2012, which has increased since 2008. This increase of profit means that the sport is expanding and gaining interest. Most of the money that comes into the sport doesn't leave. Much of the profits go back into paying out prize money, veterinary bills, and maintenance of racetracks. The governing structure of horse racing is the British Horse Racing Authority. They regulate the sport according to licenses of the horse, regular drugs tests, and track designs. This moves on to research and development, where the governing body also invests in this to create new jumps or track designs to make the sport more attractive. Along with this, regular drug tests on the horse create an anti-doping campaign around the sport, regulating and creating a fair race for everyone. This goes back to scandals such as Godolphin, where random drug tests caught out some horse owners. Therefore, their, their licenses had to be removed. Of course, this would then have an effect on other markets such as betting, as bettors may stop betting with concerns to uncertainty to the fairness of the race. Or, of course, this could go the other way, where bettors would put bets and bookmarkers would then lose huge amounts of money. This leads me on to licensing, where teams must be licensed to train a horse to run. This is the same within grassroots racing as well. However, betting is the main concern within the governing body, as no actual jockey can bet in a horse worldwide, and we can see many sports following this trend also, as it stops corruption within the sport. There is a lot of talk about how these horses are treated in this business, and how they are always pushed to perform well. How do they do it? An organisation called PETA went undercover and saw how many drugs and medication they give to all the horses without them actually needing it. The horses are being overworked and are constantly on drugs to perform well. Despite the rules, jockeys will still use their whips excessively to try and win a race. Horses are abused and when they are not any good anymore, they get put down. Owners have no real care for them. 
Knowing that the horses are being drugged to perform, it has caused a lot of issues for the supporters of the sport. Thank you for watching our presentation. Hope you enjoyed it.